guys and girls, Noah Olson here to talk to you about rowing. Rowing is one of those movements that I love to hate and hate to love. It's such a good exercise for you. It's a little bit more difficult for someone of my stature being on the shorter end of things competitively. It's something that I've had to work a lot on over the years to get better at. A couple quick tips that hopefully will be able to help you guys as well. When I'm setting up my foot position on the rower, I personally wear a size 10 and a half shoe and I always set it up at a three. I know that I've been told in the past I could probably bump it up even lower, so setting it up at a two or a one. I feel like the three puts the push pad right at the ball of my feet and I feel like that's where I generate the most power. That's essentially what you're looking for is getting this little angled pad on the ball of your feet so you can drive through that with your legs and create power to pull that chain back. So once it's set up on a three on both sides, I'll slip my feet in, pull these straps nice and tight. This is kind of a quick side tip if you are in a workout where you have to transition quickly in and out of the rower, you want to set it up just at the verge of the point where it's loose enough that you can get your feet in and out quickly, but tight enough that they're not going to be sliding all over the place. So sometimes you have to play with that, find out what that is. And I will typically put a piece of tape around this extra piece of strap so it'll stay exactly where I want it to be. And I don't have to worry about that extra piece getting in the way like that as I try to get my foot in and out of the rower. But once you have your feet set nice and tight, I like to think about setting up from the top down. So I'll get my back in a nice flat position. I'll engage my lats. I'll try to hinge forward at my hips, grab that handle. I believe that, to be honest, you're supposed to grip the handle fully with your thumb wrapped around the bottom. I personally like to put my thumbs both on the inside of the handle. That's just kind of always felt comfortable for me. With my lats still engaged, I'm gonna initiate the movement by driving through my legs. Once I get to the point where my legs are almost straight, now I'll start hinging at my hip. And then once my hips have opened up a bit, I'll pull with my arms until that rower handle is just at the bottom of my chest. And to bring it back in, I'm gonna reverse that movement. So I'll let my arms go out until they're straight. My hips will hinge back in and my legs will start to bend until I get to about that seam starting position. Some common faults that we'll see on a rower with timing are going to be pulling too soon, not using your legs for the whole movement. We could end up opening up way too soon or driving our hips too far back, right? So that's driving hips too far back or opening up too soon. Another thing you'll see people do a lot is go out around their knees. And you want to have that cable. I was told once, and this kind of always stuck with me, maybe I'll stick with you guys. Imagine that you're keeping the cable right on a tabletop. So it should stay in the same position all the way through the movement, and it should not have much up and down movement as you're going in and out on the road. So, Legs, hips, arms, arms, hips, legs, legs, hips, arms, arms, hips, legs. As you start to increase the pace, all you're doing is driving harder through your legs to create a little bit more speed as you pull that machine. A couple other quick tips on the rower when you're setting up the number here is called the damper. That's how much air is allowed in and out of the filter. The higher you have it, the more difficult it is to pull the chain, but the more you're gonna get rewarded as you're pulling. The lower you have it, the easier and quicker you're gonna be able to pull the chain, but you're not gonna get as much out of that on the screen. I like to put my damper somewhere in the middle. I'll usually go with about a, a six or a seven, depending on what the workout is. For something that's gonna be a little bit longer and slower, I'm gonna go a little bit lower, down toward five. For something that's gonna be really fast and powerful, I'll bump it up a little higher to, uh, toward the eight. Another quick tip here in setting up on the screen, 
I personally like to have as little distraction as possible. So when you click just row on a rower, you're getting a lot of feedback here. Your overall time, your pace per 500 meters, how many meters you've rowed, your stroke rate, the average, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. But on the bottom of this right-hand column, if you click that button, it simplifies things. And here you're only gonna now be able to see the amount of time that you've been rowing, your pace per 500 meters, how many meters you've rode and the stroke rate. So it keeps it a little more simple. You can kind of focus on maintaining and holding a pace the whole time. A bit of an epiphany that I had recently while doing some tough rowing intervals is that the effort on the rower is really only needed for half the time. So you're putting the effort in here on the pole, but the entire other half here, you can relax and you're not really doing any work. So it's a nice hard pull and then you can just breathe and relax and weigh in. And that was something that struck me and it made rowing feel a little bit easier. Rowing can often feel really difficult and laborious and like you're just suffering through it the whole time. But if you think of it that way, you're really only working through half of the row. Recovering from a row can be pretty variable depending on the person and what the workout was. For example, at the CrossFit Games, we had to do a marathon row, which took about three hours. And I would say almost every muscle on my body was pretty sore after that, but mostly my glutes were rocked. So when you're recovering your glutes with the Mark Pro, I will typically put two pads right on my low back, and the corresponding pads of that color are gonna go right on the top part of your glute, your gluteus maximus, gluteus maximus. This is your part, buddy. That corresponding color is gonna go right at the top of your glute on your gluteus maximus, and that should give you a, a good little flush there through most of the glute muscle. Um, another place that you can get pretty sore from a row would be your quads. I like to do a general flush here. I'll put one pad at the bottom and one pad toward the top. That's gonna kind of flush your entire quad. Some people will also find that their arms get sore because it can be a lot of pulling repetition. So to get a full arm flush, I will typically take one pad and put it either on the palm of my hand or the middle of my forearm and then have that other pad right at the base of my bicep and that will typically get a good full flush of the arm. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So that's gonna give me a good flush. And if I decide that I want to move it down even further to the palm of my hand, now I'm going almost from the bottom to the top of my arm and getting a pretty good amount of recovery there. It's even a good trick if you wanna pet your dog, but you don't have the energy. 